The Thorson House, located in Berkeley, California, is one of the green and green ultimate bungalows. Built in 1909 by Hall and Ott, the house is a California historic landmark. The exterior of the home has a timeless landscape with a level of detail that hints at the treasures within. Inside is a masterpiece in design and execution in numerous mediums including metal, tile, and of course wood. Since 1942, the house has been owned and cared for by the Sigma Phi Society of California, who's responsible for its care and preservation. So let's take a trip up that beautiful brick walkway and meet up with green and green enthusiast, Daryl Peart. Okay, we're in the living room here and this is the bookcase. Uh, this, this, I, I like to study, this is a good piece to study. There's a lot of classical proportioning going on here that's not apparent at the surface level. Um, in, in my design class, I've used this a uh, 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 shot of this to 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 illustrate some of the uh, stuff that's going on. There's a lot of nuance. It's not apparent at first look. This is one of my favorite things in the Thorson House. Uh, it's one of the first things I noticed when I one of my one of my early visits. Uh, when you first look at this shelf, it's 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 really nice. It, it's it's kind of thin. And, and, and sleek and it doesn't look bulky. But if you think about it, this is a long shelf. It's nearly four feet long, if it isn't over four feet long. And there's a lot of books on here. With this thin a shelf, you would think it would bow like that. But when you look underneath the shelf, you see these, what I call kind of a waterfall detail. And it, it, it the shelf is actually not that thin. It's actually much thicker and it has a lot of load capacity because of that. But when I first saw this, I didn't think about the load capacity and stuff. I just thought this little waterfall detail was a really, really, really neat de detail. But as I thought about it, I realized there's a, there's a purpose for that. You know, this is, this is form follows function at its best. That, that drop down gives, you know, gives it that, that shelf more bulk so it can hold all that weight. That is, uh, you know, uh, the Greens did that over and over again. They, they, they found a, they had a problem that they turned into a, an aesthetic detail, made it a plus rather than a minus. The level of detail is incredible too, because if you look at this, I guess it'd be a breadboard end here. This cascades down, but this is proud all over here too. So, I mean, it, it's detail upon detail. The little breadboard is proud of the cascading uh, uh, layers here. Yeah, before we leave the uh, bookcase here, there, there, there's, there's another detail that, that, that I find just astounding. Uh, this is the escutcheon. And, and normally, you know, that would just be an off-the-shelf metal part. And that's what I originally thought it was. When I saw uh, these bookshelves in, 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 in photos, I assumed that was a metal part. And my first visit here, I realized that's, that's Magasser ebony that's inlaid. This is one of those things that uh, you, could, uh, you could live here for years before you realize that that was a carved inlaid piece. It's just, uh, 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 it's another one of those little discoveries that are just really neat. Okay, here's another example of the greens using uh, uh, shop made hardware, you know, this pull. Every pull they ever did was never something they bought. It was something they made. And each time they used that pull, it morphed into something just slightly different. Here we see this one down here, big long one, and it's got the bars top and bottom. But if we move up here to the built-in secretary, we, we've got basically the same pull. There's not any bars up here. It's a little thinner, morphed a little differently. And uh, again, a little different up here. And here again, we see the escutcheon. And, and it's, a, it's another variation of the other one, only it's going a different direction. Uh, and down below, we have another pull, but this one doesn't have that back plate on it. Again, another variation, just, just quiet little subtle variations. This is the drawers in the living room, uh, just under the bookcase. And, and they're all like this. We have a half pin at the top and a full tail at the bottom. It's kind of a curiosity, but it, it, it goes throughout. They're all like that. 
You know, one, one of the differences with the Thorson house is that uh, the other green and green ultimate bungalows were built by the Hall brothers. The Thorson house was built by the Hall brothers and Ott. Ott uh, used to work for the uh, Halls and uh, not much is known about why he broke off and was the um, you know, uh, co-contractor on, on the house, but he was. But that, that sometimes explains a few of the things that were a little different about this house, like the dovetails. A lot of the other houses uh, were either a lock joint or, or finger joints, and this was a, the only one of the ultimate bungalows where they actually used dovetails. Each, each uh, uh, time the uh, Greens designed a house, they had different criteria they were uh, uh, using that you know, the, the client had given them. Um, Mr. Thorson had a maritime connection, uh, and here we see what, what appears to be the a bow of a ship. It kind of represents that. There's a couple things in here that uh, relate back to maritime. Here's another unique detail to the Thorson house, this whole corner unit. There's all sorts of levels going in and out. Uh, very interesting detail. As we follow this up the line, you can look at the grain up there. It goes at a diagonal, 45 degrees. That's another little play going on with all this different stuff. Okay, here we have another light picture. We're in the living room next to the uh, fireplace here. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's the only, there's another one in the dining room that's like this, only this one is dark. This one is stained very, very dark. Has a lot of nice little cutouts in it. Here we have an example of recessed lighting, green and green style. Uh, if you look at the pattern here, there's a lot of cloud lifts and, and stuff, uh, three panels. They hinge down and where you can get up into the lights. Very interesting. Okay, here we have the uh, uh, French doors between the uh, entryway and the uh, living room. On this side, they're faced with teak. As we open them up, well, before we open them all the way, let's take a look at this hinge here. It's like a lot of green and green furniture. It's butt hinges stacked all the way down. And if you look over here, we have double hinges on the top and on the bottom and a single in the middle. They, they, they were, they always kind of overbuilt a lot of their stuff, really, really just went crazy on it. As we open it up, we've got mahogany facing the other side. This is an interesting array. This is a 1909 control panel. Here we have the light switches controlling them out from the, the street down here and in sequence going all the way to the top of the stairs. If we take, I think it's this one, and look in the mirror, oops, that goes to the uh, entry there, and it's the next one up here then. This one, and you look in the mirror, you can see it go off and on. Okay, here, here we have another illustration of, of, of the greens uh, uh, taking uh, something that could have just been, uh, you know, an off-the-shelf metal part but, but making it out of wood, and, and uh, it's a coat rack, or coat hook rather, uh, uh, in two different kinds. I'm not sure what the purpose of the lower one was versus the upper one. Uh, this might have been hats, and this might have been canes or whatever. But uh, uh, another illustration of, of, of uh, 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 making it your own, yourself rather than buying the part off the shelf. The greens often took something of utility and made it a thing of, uh, of beauty. Here we have this scarf joint, and, and to look at it, you'd say, oh, that's just a really neat design implement, but that, that's, a function, that, you know, that's a functional piece, but it, 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 it looks so neat. You know, they, they, they stylized it to the point of, of making it art. Yeah, this painting is original to the house, and again, it's, it's, it's that, uh, that maritime theme, and it's, it's survived all these years still here. Okay, green and green didn't take things off, you know, just, just cut and paste. They didn't just take a detail and replicate it here, replicate it there. Each instance had its own purpose, uh, it, and, and it was within context. They had to think of where this was going, what it was doing. Each time it morphed into something different, you know, uh, relating to, to, to what was going on. Here we have a corner of the wall and these fingers are kind of narrow and they extend quite a bit actually 
And, uh, but now compare that to what we have over here above the curtain. This is quite a bit different. This finger is a lot chubbier. They don't extend. The center one is narrower. Uh, 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 much a different use, different, um, uh, different look for it. Uh, and let's go into the dining room because there's one similar to this, uh, but it's different. Now here we have another finger joint. It's similar to the one that was holding the curtain rod, but the two fingers here are similar, but this one is much thicker. It's the same as this one, basically. Uh, d again, different instance, and they, they made it do something different. Uh, I'd like to get into Charles Green's head sometime, but that's, that's not possible. That's going back in history to wonder why it was different, but it does work. If you were to take that one and put it here, I'm sure it wouldn't look right. This is the built-in in the dining room. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's very, very subtle. Notice the cloud lifts. They're very, very quiet. They're not, they're not loud. They don't hit you over the head. Uh, the Thorson house was typically that. It was not, you know, it didn't just, it wasn't wowie zowie, but it was very refined, you know, and delicate. And that's, that's what this is. There's a lot of things going on on this. There's a lot of relief. You can see the relief in the top here where there's, you know, it steps up, that step again like we saw in the uh, uh, shelves. But not only there, but if you take a look down below here, it's just relief everywhere. It's really interesting. Okay, here we have the uh, uh, fixture that's in the ceiling of the dining room. Very, all kinds of layers going on, all kinds of detail up in here. If, if you look really close up here, you can see all kinds of little relief that, uh, and, and, and that's interesting because it's so far away, you know, when the closer you get, the more detail you see. Uh, uh, one really fun little thing with this is, to replace the lights, one of these goes up, there it is, right there. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to break anything, but see how that recesses and goes up? That's how you get access to changing the bulbs in that piece. We're on the uh, stairway leading to the second floor uh, and here we see uh, uh, some square pegs. The units that they're, they're placed on are rectangular. They're living in the square world. But this is an illustration on, uh, uh, in this case, there's a reason for those pegs to be square. But if we pan down to the downward slope here on the stairway, and we see some pegs here, and these are parallelograms. They were morphed to, to, to um, uh, uh, work with the shape of what they were placed on. A good illustration of, of, of how they change things from one position to the next. While we're on the stairway, maybe we can take a look right in here and we can see this cloud lift on the stairway. And, and it illustrates, you know, when they did cloud lifts, when they rounded things over, there was absolutely no, no facets, no sharp edges. They, 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 they took a lot of pains to make sure that everything was, was very rounded, no, no uh, 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 sharp edges to catch light. This, this detailing in here looks Art Deco, but this was a few years before Art Deco. We're upstairs in Mrs. Thorson's uh, bedroom. Uh, here we've got the light fixtures. They're not quite as fancy as the ones downstairs. They're a little more utilitarian. You can see where this one used to hang down on a chain and swing. You can see the marks where it left. But here's a really interesting feature right here. There's been a lot of speculation about what this, this is, uh, but this is original. Uh, the speculation is it was a chin-up bar. We will never know, but um, I mean, it's, uh, there's a door here, so it's really not, you know, for a curtain rod. It's a uh, uh, chin-up bar sounds good to me. There, there's other theories. This could, uh, uh, maybe it wasn't a chin-up bar. That sounds good to me, because that's what I would have used it for. Uh, but it, apparently it looks like it's not going to hold. You know, it could be, you know, that, that she hang her clothes there and let them dry or something. Something to do, uh, uh, it was a function of hers that she had specifically done here for something. Okay, here's a pull in the upstairs hallway. I really like this one. It, it, it's kind of in a low relief, very subtle, very quiet, but very elegant, just very, very nice. 
when we pull the drawer out, you see this in a lot of green and green drawers, you see this gentle little cloud lift on the side. But again, that's like, like, like we saw with the shelves down below. I, I think there was probably a more, there, there was a utility to, uh, per, utilitarian purpose to that. And as we glide, move the drawer in and out, it moves in and out really easy until it gets right up in here. It's not difficult, but that's a tighter fit. So it, it also serves to let the drawer move in and out easier. And, and then when it gets up to where it's supposed to be, it, it, it's much closer. We're on the outside of the house now. The house is on Piedmont Avenue. Uh, but you see, and, and the house is 2307, I believe, on Piedmont, but you see 2806 here. This is Bancroft. This is the side of the house. Uh, this is where the delivery man would come and he had a key to this. He had opened it up. This is kind of a, what was called a cold closet, kind of a uh, ice box of sorts. He would put his delivery in there and then he would push this button and it would turn on the light up there and it would tell the people, the servants inside, that a delivery had been made. Okay, here we are next to the coal closet. Now we have coal, C-O-A-L, not cold, but coal. And this, they would open this up and this is where the coal delivery would come. This is what's called the clothes yard. At one time, they would stretch a line diagonally across this yard, attaching it over to the other side and they'd hang their clothes out here. It was all enclosed with uh, uh, fencing and stuff around here and it was uh, used to hang the clothes. And this is what was called a garbage receiver. The garbage would be placed in there and at that time they didn't have a lot of garbage, just table scraps and it'd amount to just a little bit. The garbage collector would come, he would open this up by foot and he had a hook on a line and he'd reach down there and it just pull that up and then he'd retrieve it and off he'd go with it. Yeah, this isn't woodworking, but this is one of my favorite details of the Thorson house. These metal straps are kind of self-locking. They've been here for years and you see they've kind of, they've kind of aged, they've got a little, not really rust going on, but they've kind of pitted and they're just, just really almost organic looking or something. You can see they're locked in this side and if, as you go around the beams here, it's the same thing over here. They're kind of self-tightening, self-locking. If we look at the roof line up here, no, that roof is not sagging. That's, that's a Japanese uh, uh, detail where it works its way down like that. And look at the gutter where it gets wider and, and, and follows that same, uh, same, same, same flow downward. Interesting detail. A, a lot of the details of the uh, Thorson house are Asian, you know, uh, like the uh, uh, cloud lifts and such. I mean, that's easy to spot. Uh, but if you look up at the top of the chimney, you see these arches, and that was kind of a Gothic Tudor thing, you know. Uh, so, but then if we look over here and up at the top of the roof line, we see that large overhang, which more of a, a Swiss chalet thing. So they, they were good at blending all sorts of different sources to make it kind of speak the same, same voice. It really, uh, it, it works well together, coming from a lot of different varied sources. I'd like to thank Daryl Peard and the friends of the Thorson House for giving me the opportunity to make this video. While the house still looks great on camera, it is in need of some TLC. So if you'd like to help support the restoration effort, please go to thorsonhouse.com for all the details. There are some major restoration projects in the works, and the friends of the Thorson House need your help to make them a reality. I hope you enjoyed this tour of a Green and Green Ultimate Bungalow.